afternoon folks we should be recording now thanks for joining us this afternoon and welcome to today's session which is all about spina bifida and arthritis which many of our members tell us they are living with uh, we're going to start off today's session uh, with our sh own Shine Health Advisor, Jenny, who's going to give us some information about um, the survey that we did uh, the year before last now and what the picture is um, that our members have told us. Um, and then I'm going to pass you over after Jenny's bit. I'm going to pass you on to um, Sarah Greener, who's very kindly joined us today from Versus Arthritis, which is a national charity that can support people with um, different types of arthritis. So, Jenny, if you're ready to go, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Mel. So I'll, let me just share my screen. I, I suppose I should also have said, actually, sorry, um, Helen and I are going to be on the chat sharing links and picking up on any comments and questions you may have today. Please send us a hello. Let us know if you're out there listening to us. It's always good to know who's out there. And please remember that any comments that you do put in our chat are viewable publicly. So if you've got any private uh, questions then please get in touch with um, either uh, our head office or your local SDW. Okay sorry Jenny I'll uh, pass, pass on to you again. <laughs> Lovely thanks Mel. So today we're going to be specifically talking about sort of osteoarthritis. There are other types but what we're really talking about today is the sort of wear and tear that happens to joints. Um, and we know from the results of our um, adult survey that we conducted um, and wrote the report on last year, that that's something that affects a lot of our members. So we found out that 28% of our um, adults over 25 have been diagnosed with osteoarthritis, which is significantly higher than um, the sort of general UK population which is estimated to be about 10% of adults over 20. And as you might expect, um, the, the proportion of people with um, arthritis increased with age, so with increasing wear and tear, starting at about 9 to 10% in, in the younger age group, 25, 35s, and rising steadily to reach 59% um, in people 71 and over. So um, only 31% of respondents had reported no upper body problems. So the reason that upper body issues like shoulder pain, neck pain and difficulty using your hands particularly affect members um, is that people that use mobility aids to get around are using their upper bodies in ways that um, people that don't use mobility aids, so don't use wheelchairs, don't use crutches, um, wouldn't normally do so it's, it's using that upper body a lot more um, and we found that only 31 percent of, of people that responded to the survey had no upper body problems at all 45 percent had two or more issues shoulder pain um, was the most common upper body issue and um, 53 percent of, of respondents had had this uh, with 48 percent having neck pain and 33 percent having difficulty using their hands so this is quite a complicated um, looking graph, but what this is basically showing is that there's no particular difference between any kind of mobility aid and how that affects the upper body. So it's just that you're using it. So um, people who walked unaided um, had generally fewer um, lower bod uh, upper body issues, but anybody using either sticks or crutches, manual wheelchairs, some are all the time, um, were all at a raised risk of having having kind of pain and, and problems with their upper body. And um, I won't read all of these out, but these are just some some quotes taken directly from the survey that sort of show the real impact of those upper body problems and of, of arthritis on people's lives. So it sort of makes 
sort of day-to-day -day tasks more difficult. It makes getting around more difficult. Um, pain has a significant impact on people's mental health um, and their ability to, to work and live independently. Um, and, you know, for, for some people, their lives aren't too impacted, but, but for a lot of people, that, that pain and that difficulty using their body really significantly impacted in lots of different ways. So we're really, really grateful to Sarah for, for joining us today. So this is obviously an issue that um, affects a lot of people and a lot of people very deeply. So thank you to Sarah and I'll hand over to you now. Thank you. Um, I'll just share my screen. Um, so thank you so much um, for asking me to come and speak to you today. Um, my name is Sarah and I'm the Pembrokeshire Services Coordinator for Versus Arthritis. Um, although I've got a map of Wales up, it is a national charity. We do cover all of Wales, England, Scotland and Northern Ireland as well. Um, so today um, we're going to be sort of covering what is arthritis. Um, we're going to be giving you an overview of osteoarthritis and its associated symptoms. Um, we're going to be talking about the impact of osteoarthritis um, that ha it has on a person and their life. We're going to be going through some self-management tips for living with osteoarthritis, um, as well as some general pain management tips. We're also going to be giving you an introduction to versus arthritis, um, an overview of the support available in West Wales. Um, and I can also touch on some of the other support available to other parts of the UK um, and some of the other areas of work within the charity. This may sound like quite a lot, but it is going to be a sort of whistle stop tour. Um, and if there's any questions um, throughout, please put them in the chat. Um, and if not, contact me after. That's no problem. So arthritis describes pain, swelling and stiffness in one or more joints. And it can affect people of any age, including children. This is one of the key things that versus arthritis is trying to um, overcome. The fact that people think it's generally an older person's condition, but it can affect people of any age, including children. There are around 10 million people in the UK um, who are thought to have arthritis. There isn't a cure at the moment, but treatments are improving. Um, it's often difficult to identify a cause, but there are several factors that can increase your risk for them. And symptoms can vary both from person to person and from day to day. So arthritis is an umbrella term. It includes nearly 200 different conditions. Um, and just some of these examples are bursitis, fibromyalgia, joint hypermobility syndrome, carpal tunnel syndrome, gout, hammer toes, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, lupus, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, psoriatic arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, Raynaud's phenomenon, vasculitis, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendinopathy. There are just so many different conditions um, that are classed under arthritis. It is sort of any condition that affects like bones and joints. Um, so we've got people with sort of bulging discs. We've got a very wide range of people who we support. Um, today, however, we're going to be focusing on osteoarthritis, um, and I've just got a video here to sort of explain uh, um, what is osteoarthritis. Sorry, Sarah, there appears to be no sound at the moment. Oh. Jen, can you share the sound? <laughs> um, I'll go back. Right. Um, I will I'll go again with the sound, sorry. Um, That's okay. Not to worry. What is osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis is the most common type of arthritis, 
It affects around 9 million people in the UK and is more common among women. In most cases, people are over 45 when they get it. It can cause pain and stiffness in joints. The most common joints to be affected are the knees, hips, back, feet and hands. To understand what happens in osteoarthritis, let's first look at how a healthy joint works. A joint is where two or more bones meet. They allow bones to move freely without letting them move too far. A joint is held together by a capsule and ligaments. There is a soft inner lining to the joint called the synovium. A thick fluid is made by the synovium which protects the joint and helps bones move freely. Thin layers of tough, slippery tissue called cartilage act as a protective cushion to stop bones rubbing against each other. Muscles are attached to tendons and tendons are attached to bones. Our muscles pull our tendons, which in turn pull our bones. Osteoarthritis starts when cartilage starts to thin or roughen. This can happen naturally during the aging process. There are also things that can make this more likely to happen. For example, being overweight or an injury. Once the cartilage has started to thin or roughen, the body puts in place a repair process to try to make up for the loss of cartilage. The repair process may work well, but can sometimes cause further problems. New bits of bone may grow within the joint. Extra fluid can also build up inside the joint. The extra fluid and the new bits of bone can cause swelling and may force the joint capsule out of shape. If you have osteoarthritis, try to maintain a healthy weight and keep moving as much as possible. Exercises to strengthen the muscles around the joint can improve symptoms of pain and stiffness. Taking painkillers can help you stay active and exercise. It can be tough having osteoarthritis. However, remaining physically active and continuing with your hobbies, normal routine and social life can help you manage your condition. Um, so as I said on the video, um, you it is most common in people over the age of 45, but it can happen earlier than that as well. Um, it's just that most cases are above 45, but it can happen earlier. So I, th I think um, I, I'm right in saying, Jenny, it, ha it seems to affect our members at a much younger age than 45, um, judging by the results of our survey. Yes, um, and we think that's a, uh, partly to do with the the differences in the way that people kind of use their bodies. So, for example, if you're a wheelchair user, traditionally um, we've sort of evolved and our shoulders aren't that involved in kind of propulsion. But if you're using your shoulders for, for propelling a manual wheelchair, you're obviously wearing that joint, putting more strain on that joint than you ordinarily would. And so we think that's partly what's responsible for the, um, the increased wear and tear, basically. Thank you. Um, so symptoms of osteoarthritis, um, there's pain and sometimes stiffness in the affected joint. The pain may be worse when you move the joint or at the end of the day. Um, joints may feel stiff after rest, but it usually will wear off when you're moving. Symptoms can vary according to what you're doing, but they can also vary for no obvious reason at all. Um, sometimes the muscle around the joint may look thin or wasted and the joint may give way as well because the muscles have weakened or the joint structure is less stable. So swelling, the affected joint can sometimes be swollen. Um, the swelling can either be hard or knobbly, particularly in sort of finger joints, which is caused by the extra growth of the bone. But the swelling may also be soft um, if the thickening of the joint lining and there's extra fluid in the joint capsule as well. So there may be different types of swelling. Crepitus. Crepitus is a word that a lot of people use, but they're not always sure what it means. So it is a symptom of osteoarthritis um, and it's where joints do not move as freely or as far as normal. Um, and the joint may make a grating or a crackling sound when it's moved. Um, was there any questions or comments at the moment? Nothing at the moment, Sarah, nope, but that's thanks, for, thanks for asking. That's OK. Thank you. Um, so risk factors um, for osteoarthritis. So the cause of osteoarthritis is still unknown. However, there are several factors which can increase your risk, such as age, gender, obesity, 
joint injury, joint abnormalities, genetic factors and other types of joint disease. We will now explore some of these in a little bit more detail. So age, it usually will affect people from the late 40s, but not always. And this may be due to bodily changes, such as weakening muscles, weight gain, and the body becoming less able to heal itself effectively. Gender, um, in most joints, osteoarthritis is more severe and common in women. Um, it's not entirely sure why yet, but it is looking more common in women. Um, being overweight can cause osteoarthritis, particularly um, in weight bearing joints um, as well, because they are taking more strain and weight and pressure through them. Joint injury and joint abnormality. So a major injury or operation may lead to osteoarthritis later in life. Um, normal activity and exercise, they don't cause osteoarthritis, but very hard repetitive activity or a physically demanding job can increase your risk. And if you were born with joint abnormalities or develop them in childhood, this can also lead to earlier and more severe osteoarthritis than usual. So there are also genetic factors. So the genes that we inherit can affect the likelihood of getting osteoarthritis, especially of the hand, knee or hip. And there are some very rare forms of osteoarthritis which are linked to mutations of single genes that affect a protein called collagen. Um, and this can lead to osteoarthritis developing in many joints at an earlier age. So weather, a lot of people think the weather is a cause of their osteoarthritis, but it's not actually a cause. Um, although many people will find the changes in weather can make the pain worse. Um, so especially just before it rains, there's a lot of people who can tell that it's about to rain just by the pain in their joints. Um, so if you have that, you're definitely not alone. And it's a very common thing um, to be able to sense the weather with your joints. Um, so which joints are affected? So any joint can develop osteoarthritis, um, but the symptoms most commonly are linked to knees, hips, hands, spine, and big toes. But as you can see from the diagram, there are a lot more joints that can be affected by it. So osteoarthritis of the knee is very common. Um, the knee has to take a lot of twists and turns and bears body weight, um, and it can affect both knees as well. Osteoarthritis of the hip um, is also common. So the hip joint is a ball and socket and has a very wide range of movement. Um, it can also bear quite a lot of weight um, and it's equally common in both men and women in the hip. Hand and wrist. So osteoarthritis of the hands, um, when this occurs, this is usually part of nodal osteoarthritis and it mainly will affect women and often starts around the time of the menopause. Um, usually it affects the base of the big thumb and the joints at the end of your fingers, although other finger joints can also be affected. Back and neck, the bones of the spine and the discs in between, they're often affected by changes very similar to osteoarthritis. But in the spine, these are usually called spondylosis. Um, foot and ankle, so osteoarthritis of the foot will generally affect the joint at the base of the big toe. Um, it can also affect um, the midfoot, but it's least commonly in the ankle. So the shoulder, your shoulder consists of two joints, um, either of which can be affected by osteoarthritis. So you've got the ball and socket joint where the upper arm meets the shoulder blade. And you've also got the smaller joint where the collarbone meets the shoulder blade. So either of those joints can be affected by osteoarthritis. The jaw is one of the most frequently used joints in the body, especially if you're like me and you like to talk and you like to eat. They're my two favorite things to do. So my jaw is definitely used quite a lot. Um, the cartilage is very prone to wear um, and osteoarthritis of the jaw often starts earlier than in other joints um, just because of the use of the jaw. So it is really important to get an accurate diagnosis. So if you do think you've got osteoarthritis, um, it is really important that you go to the doctor. Um, they will do a variety of different tests maybe to um, diagnose it. So they'll diagnose based on your symptoms. They will do a sort of physical examination of you. There isn't any blood test for osteoarthritis, but they may do blood tests to rule out other types of arthritis. Um, X-rays. They're usually not that helpful in the diagnosis, but if you've got sort of calcium deposits in your joint, then x-rays may be used and can pick that up. Um, and then MRI scan, um, it's rarely used, um, but it can identify other bone or joint problems which may be causing an issue. 
Um, are there any questions or um, comments at the moment? Uh, yes, Sarah. Um, yeah. Leslie has noted, um, I've had problems in shoulders, hands and left knee. I had an injury in that joint also. The joint is abnormal, but that is worse and bad lymphoma as well. Does, so does lymphoma have anything, does that have any links with arthritis? Um, I'm not sure, but I can I can find out and get back to you after the session, if that's okay. Yeah, um, that's okay. And yeah. as Jenny mentioned at the start as well, I imagine um, you, you sort of said it was very common in the jaw and the hip and as you, but yeah. for our membership, there's probably a higher rate of arthritis in the upper body, as Jenny yeah. said, because of the way lots of our members mobilize. They're using crutches or they're using um, self, self-propelled wheelchairs. And yeah. before we go on, though, um, Anne, Anne's also mentioned that she has pain in her fingers um, and her finger is changing shape. So she's asking, do splints work to correct this and ease the pain? Um, splints can be useful sometimes. Um, it is worth sort of before you use splints, it is worth sort of double checking with a doctor or a physio um, that you are using the right ones um, so that they can help you, but they can work um, to help. But some, yeah, it's sort of mixed. Some people find them very useful. Some people don't find them useful. So we will go on to sort of self-management techniques, but they are very much trial and error. Um, because they sort of work for some people, but not all. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, if not, just put something in the comments um, and I'll pick that up again later on. Um, okay, and then Samantha's just um, noted that she'd been diagnosed with it in both knees and they managed to do that by x-ray. Well, that's, yeah, that is good. So the x-rays can be used. Um, it's just not always helpful. Um, so not everyone will be x-rayed, um, but as I say, it can be picked up by x-ray, um, but it's just not always used. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. That's okay. Um, so how does osteoarthritis affect someone? So it affects different people and different joints in different ways, and we've heard some people there who are affected. So for most people, the osteoarthritis doesn't continue to get steadily worse over time, and the condition will reach a peak um, about a few years after the symptoms develop, and then it will sort of remain the same. However, there are some people who experience several phases of sort of, phases of, sort of moderate joint pain and then have improvements in between. So it is different for everyone, and everyone will experience different things, but it doesn't just generally continue to just get worse and worse. So the degree of damage doesn't actually affect the amount of pain experienced. So we've got some people who experience a lot of pain and they've got a very small amount of damage. And we've got people with a lot of damage that have very few symptoms. So it's not linked to the degree of damage, the amount of pain. Now, emotional well-being. Um, depression is four times more common among people in persistent pain. And the emotional effects of arthritis can have just as much impact as the physical symptoms. Um, so it is a really important topic to discuss. Um, so we're going to talk now about how you can look after your emotional well-being. Um, keep up with activities that you enjoy or you can try a new one. Um, try and stay connected to family, friends and local community. Keep active if you can. Um, learn to relax and also talk to someone if you're struggling. So that can be um, your friends, your family, your support network. It can be a healthcare professional. It can be sort of counselling. It can be anything, but it is really important to talk to someone if you are struggling. Mindfulness. Now, this is an increasingly popular, it's increasingly popular to improve well-being and some simple tips to be mindful in your everyday life. So you can take a moment to notice your senses as you do something routine, such as what can you hear? What can you taste? What can you smell? What can you feel? Focus on your breathing for a few minutes. Ask yourself how you are feeling in any given moment. And close your eyes and mentally scan your body to see how each part is feeling. And that can sort of help you relax you as well. Osteoarthritis, it can affect your sleep. So some tips for a good night's sleep. Um, avoid caffeine, especially after midday. Um, get a good bedtime routine. And don't keep looking at the clock if you're struggling to sleep. I know it's tempting and you might work out, oh, if I don't go to sleep now, I only get a few hours till I wake up. Just Try not to look at the clock if you can. 
And if the pain is keeping you awake or if it's waking you up in the night, it's really important to try and talk to a healthcare professional about that as well. Um, osteoarthritis can also have um, a big impact on relationships. So the dynamic can be affected where one person in a relationship takes on more of a carer role. Um, the fatigue and pain can also affect ability to complete household tasks, and this can lead to some tension. Um, it often reduces people's self-esteem, um, but it is really important to talk about your feelings and challenges, if you can, with people you're close to. And we have got a lot more information on some of these points at the end. So I've got a list of links um, that I will send out. Um, and so they might be more information on there for you. Are there any questions at the moment? No, uh, no uh, specific questions. A few comments where Jolene has said her finger bones are swollen. So we, that's quite a few people who've mentioned that they've got issues with their fingers. I wonder whether that's, be, you know, whether they're in that um, age group where, where you mentioned menopause. So it'd be interesting to know. I, I guess as well, if you're using crutches or something, it can equally affect not just the upper body, but if you're using crutches or um, self-propelling the wheelchair it could affect your fingers as well the the wear and tear yeah so fingers are quite commonly affected as well um in people who aren't using sort of crutches as well just from doing um day-to-day -day tasks your hands and fingers do quite a lot normally um we will talk about sort of gadgets and things that can really help with sort of especially fingers and things. Um, we'll talk about it briefly today, but we've also got a separate talk on gadgets as well. So if your fingers are making you struggle to do your sort of basic tasks, like you're opening your jars, opening your bottles, then, you know, I'm more than happy to come back if you'd like me to and talk about gadgets and things with it as well. That sounds like a really great follow up session. I might take yeah. you up on that, Sarah. Yeah, no problem at all. Happy I to think come. that's it for now. Yeah. OK, so as I said, there are lots of aids and adaptations which are available to help you at home. They range in price, so they can be things like putting an elastic band around the top of a bottle will help you grip it more um, and that can help you open it. Um, but if you are making a sort of and you can have sort of walk-in baths um, and some of those do cost quite a bit so if you are spending a fair amount of money on an adaptation we really do recommend you get assessed by an occupational therapist um, we've had people sort of put in rails in their house and actually it wasn't the right place and now they've got to do it again um, so if you are you know we are, do recommend you get that assessment done by that um, and as I said we can come back and do a separate session on aids and adaptations for you in more detail. That would be quite useful because we've had several of our members wanting to have things done. And yeah. I've had that now. And there may be delays in the occupational therapists coming out, largely because of yeah. COVID. But as you said, again, your support and development workers in Shine can help you get in contact or make that referral initially, explaining and giving an overall picture. So um, I know things are a little bit delayed. I know some members have gone and fitted things in the meantime, obviously, because there's things they're worried about. But as you said, you know, we're on hand to help with that and kind of push it forward a little bit as well on our members' behalf. So, yeah. 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 Um, so it can also affect um, your work. Um, but So most people can continue to work, but if you are doing a physically demanding job, then you may need to make some changes. Um, it's worth speaking to your company's occupational health department. Um, and you can also talk to your local Job Centre Plus about access to work. Um, and if you're on universal credit, you can actually put it in your journal that you'd like to speak to the disability employment advisor um, and they can talk to you about access to work on there as well. So physical activity. So a lot of people worry that exercising will increase their pain and cause further joint damage. But actually, if you rest in the joints, it may feel comfortable at first, but it will often lead to stiffness. Um, but if you haven't exercised for a while, we do recommend you talk to a physio or your doctor before you get started. Um, so we've just got a video here about getting started. If you're ready to be more active, there are a few things you should keep in mind before you get started. First, 
it's important to have water with you while you exercise so that you can stay hydrated. You should also make sure you've taken any medication that you need. To avoid accidents, ensure that you have plenty of space and that you've moved anything that could trip you. Wear comfortable clothes and footwear and if you're using any furniture, check to be sure that it's sturdy and stable. On days when you're not feeling so good, you may need to rest. Listen to your body. If it's too uncomfortable, next time try doing a little less and building up more slowly. It can take a while to learn how much exercise you can do, so do what feels comfortable to you and find something you enjoy. And if you have severe pain while you exercise, stop. After you exercise, you should feel as though your muscles have done some work, but you should not be exhausted and you should not be in lots more pain than when you started. And remember, if you have any concerns, get in touch with your healthcare professional. Now, we know exercise isn't always the easiest thing to do, especially if you're in pain. Um, Versus Arthritis have a Let's Move with Leon program, um, which is a free program of 30 minute movement sessions. Um, it, they're very sort of simple. They have no cost, there's no gear. Um, and those are available on our website on a variety of different topics. Um, so we can send out the links for those at the end as well. Um, are there any questions um, so far or comments? I, th I think we um, as SDWs can also um, signpost our members to useful online exercise uh, classes and groups or direct them towards, um, you know, professionals who could help them get the right sort of exercise, whether in Wales, for instance, we have something like the GP referral exercise yeah. scheme. Um, so where, where they can assess your individual circumstances and make sure it's safe um, and appropriate yeah. Um, bearing in mind the spina bifida and the arthritis. Yeah, and we actually work quite closely with them um, in Pembrokeshire as well. And we recommend a lot of people go um, and they go to their GPs and ask to be referred to them. So, yeah, that is a really great scheme. Um, so it is worth asking your GP if you want to get active, if you're in Wales. Um, or, or contacting your um, yeah. sport and development worker in Shine and we can help you, um, you know, find, find the right support. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, so self ma in terms of self management, weight loss and diet. So if you are overweight, even overweight, even losing a small amount can make a huge difference to any joints that are weight bearing. Um, it is important though to follow a healthy balanced diet. Um, you can reduce the number of calories you're getting from high fat or sugary foods, but make sure you are including all the main food groups if you do this. There isn't a specific diet for osteoarthritis. However, there are some evidence to say that oily fish or fish oils may help to manage symptoms in some cases. So medications, the, the medications usually taken for osteoarthritis, it doesn't affect the condition itself, but it may help to ease the pain and stiffness. So the main types of medication used are non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, cream and gel, and also in tablet form, capsaicin cream, paracetamol, stronger pain relief, and steroid injections. So non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, creams, and gels, um, these are available, um, these can be applied directly to the skin. Um, so examples of this are ibuprofen, diclofenic gels, um, and they're available over the counter at pharmacies and supermarkets. Ketoprofen is only available on prescription, and these may work well for joints such as knees and hands, um, but they're less likely to work for hips, which lie deeper beneath the skin. Um, capsaicin cream is made from the pepper plant. It is, can be an effective painkiller. Um, it's particularly useful for osteoarthritis in the knee and the hand. Um, it's only available on prescription and would need to be applied three times a day. The pain relieving effect will start after several days of regular use. So if you are using it, try it for a couple of weeks to see if it works. Paracetamol is usually recommended as the safest type of pain relief tablet to try first. It's best taken before the pain becomes bad. 
it's readily available and there is actually no advantage in paying for more expensive brands so your bog standard is perfectly good for paracetamol so non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs um they're generally stronger pain relievers than paracetamol the most common is ibuprofen try it for sort of five to ten days if they haven't worked by then they are unlikely to um, and a doctor can prescribe different types. Um, and if a doctor prescribes them, they will usually also prescribe a proton pump inhibitor because, um, to help protect the gut because it can cause damage to your stomach on long-term taking of ibuprofen and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So if, that isn't pain, if you're not getting any pain relief from that, it is important to speak to your doctor about other options. Um, a doctor may prescribe cocodamol, which is a combination of codeine and paracetamol. Um, however, this is usually only for short periods due to its side effects. Um, steroid injections. So um, they, you may be given an injection of a long-acting steroid, um, which can be given directly into a particularly painful joint, such as the knee or the thumb. They start to work within days and they may improve your pain for several weeks or months. Um, it, it, however, it is mainly used for very painful osteoarthritis or sudden severe pain caused by the crystals in the joint. Um, other pain relief that you may um, hear of or um, want to try um, is a TENS machine. So this sends electrical pulses to your nerve endings through pads placed on the skin. It will produce a sort of tingling sensation, which is thought to relieve pain by altering pain signals sent to the brain. The evidence on its effectiveness is mixed, but some people find it useful. And it is best if you are looking for to get a TENS machine to consult your physio, um, because they're able to advise on the different types available and also show you how to use them. Um, before COVID, some departments were actually loaning them out to you, so you could try them at home to see if they work um, before you went and bought one as well. We've also got um, hyaluric acid injections, um, which is also referred to hyaluron um. It's a lubricant and a shock absorber, which is naturally found in the fluid of joints um, and sometimes used as a treatment for osteoarthritis in the knee. The research is very mixed on its long-term effectiveness, which is why it's not currently available on the NHS. It is only available privately currently. Um, supplements. Before we go on to supplements, is there any questions or comments or anything so far? Uh, I, I um, had, had a little bit of trouble just then following them, but I'll come back to you, Sarah. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, so in supplements, men, often there's very little research evidence to show that they work. Um, but some people do find them beneficial. So we're going to go through them. We're not recommending any of these particularly. We're just saying what some people do find useful. So the main supplements that people use with osteoarthritis are glucosamine, chondroitin and fish oils. So glucosamine um, is naturally found in body structures such as ligaments, tendon or cartilage. Um, it's, supplements are usually produced from shells of shellfish, um, so make sure you do look at the ingredients carefully, especially if you've got shellfish allergy. Um, there is some research to show it may have some benefit in painful osteoarthritis of the knee. Um, most trials work on 500 milligrams three times a day, um, and it generally suggests that um, glucosamine sulfate is more effective than glucosamine hydrochloride. Um, it doesn't help the pain straight away though, so you would have to try for a few months to see if it's gonna have any effects. Chondroitin, this exists naturally in bodies. It's thought to give cartilage elasticity. Um, the research evidence is limited to animal studies that suggest it may help to slow the breakdown of cartilage. It is an instant, again, you would have to try it for at least two months. Um, and if your cartilage is badly damaged, it is unlikely that you will benefit from this. Um, fish oils, so it's widely thought that fish oils and fish liver oils are thought to be good for the joints. There's not really enough data to say whether they are effective for osteoarthritis. Um, there's good evidence to say that they help with symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis though. Um, supplements from fish livers do contain a lot of vitamin A, which can be harmful in high amounts. So it is safer to get a supplement from the whole fish because they contain less vitamin A, especially if you need a high dose to get the benefit. Um, any questions or comments or anything? Or should I carry on? 
If you could carry on, please. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so complementary therapies, so some people use sort of complementary therapies to help. So these could be things like acupuncture, Alexander technique, aromatherapy, massage, osteopath, tai chi. Um, the, most of these would be sort of privately um, and just yeah, talk to someone in your local area to find out what's around. Um, but these are some things that people use. I will put more information about complementary therapies at the end. Some people use warmth and cold. Um, so when you're applying heat or ice, make sure you wrap it in a towel to protect the skin and don't put it on air, any areas that you don't have any feeling in. Um, so if you a hot water bottle can help ease the pain um, and an ice pack can help reduce swelling and discomfort. So ice can be applied for up to 20 minutes every couple of hours. So some people find ice really beneficial. Some people find heat really beneficial. So this is a really good example of just sort of trying um, different things and really listening to your body. Um, so splints, we talked briefly about splints earlier. There are a range of different splints, braces and supports available. They're particularly helpful if your osteoarthritis has affected the ligament, but it is, as I said, best to seek professional advice from either an occupational therapist or a physio in regards to splints. Um, footwear, it's really important that you have got comfortable and supportive footwear if you are able to walk. Um, so this can make a difference to your hips, knees and spine as well as your feet. Um, consult a podiatrist for specific advice and generally the ideal shoe should have a thick but soft sole, soft uppers and plenty of room at the toes and ball of the foot. Um, for podiatry and for physio, um, in Pembrokeshire, Carmarthenshire and Ceredigion, um, you can self-refer to those. Um, I'm not sure the situation in some of the other counties and areas, but if you speak to um, your local, is it support worker? Um, <laughs> yeah, they'll be able to help you more with that. Can I just add to that, Sarah? The, yeah. the points you've made around the skin in particular, me, me and Mel have run sessions about skin care in the past mm -hmm. because we know a lot of our members um, either don't feel from certain parts of their body don't have any sensation or have a lack of sensation and we know our members have maybe been burns in the past so I'd really emphasize where they're using heat to make sure it's um, wrapped you know because sometimes they've said you know for example they can scold themselves getting into a hot bath if the taps aren't controlled um, and the same thing for ice because you might think oh ice is really cooling but you can get a pretty nasty ice burn as well so for our members it's kind of paying a little bit more attention to the fact that some you know in some areas where they may be putting it they may not be feeling have complete sensation and so as to avoid any skin damage and we're quite passionate about the whole foot care as well aren't we Mal with the podiatry wanting prevention rather than cure so podiatry to keep checking members feet rather than signing them off and then like you said getting an ill-fitting pair of shoes can cause so much damage even pressure sores and pressure areas that take months and months to heal so um, good points about that really and we'd emphasize for our members to kind of really look into that a little bit more yeah and absolutely thank you so much for that that's really helpful as well um, and yeah really good advice thank you um, so walking aids, so um, for some people, their leg might give way. So a stick may help them feel less anxious about falling. Um, if it's held in the opposite hand, it can help to reduce pressure on a painful knee or hip. But again, it is always best to get advice on walking aids from a healthcare professional. Posture, whenever I do this slide, I sit up a bit straighter. Um, so good posture puts less strain on the joints um, and it can also help to relax the body. Um, and just keep a check on your posture throughout the day that you're not sort of really um, putting a lot of strain on necks and things like that. Pacing yourself. This is a really important point. So pain will vary each day. And when it can, it is really tempting to push yourself on good days, which will lead to more pain after. Um, so learn to pace yourself. Um, the spoon method is where you imagine that a spoon is your energy. And you're given sort of 12 spoons to start the day. Um, and every task you do uses a certain number of spoons. So if you got up and had a shower, if that's quite a hard task for you, that might be two or three spoons gone. Then you go down, get changed. Maybe that's another spoon. Then you go down and make breakfast. Then you decide you need to change the bed or do some, put some washing on. Suddenly your spoons are being used quite quickly and then people often say that oh by lunchtime I'm exhausted or by sort of mid-morning I'm exhausted it's because you've sort of used all your spoons 
So try and think of a way to not use all those spoons altogether. So maybe one day you do sort of a big batch cook, which although may use quite a few spoons, then you don't have to cook on maybe other days. And you can maybe do your washing on those days or change your bed or some other tasks that, you know, use the spoons. And if you have got something that you know you need to go to, if you need to go out for something that is going to use quite a lot of energy, try and consider the spoon method and not use too many spoons before you do have to go out and allow time for rest as well in that. Um, so surgery, so most people with osteoarthritis, they won't need surgery. Um, it is only considered once you have tried all other suitable options. Um, so surgery options may include joint replacement surgery, may have keyhole surgery to wash out fragments of bone and other tissue. Um, this is called an arthroscopic leverage, um, but it is normally only available privately. Um, you may also have a joint fusion where the bones are surgically fixed together to prevent movement and therefore pain. But as I said, most people will not need surgery. Um, so it is sort of only a last resort. Um, are there any questions at the moment? No, we, uh, sorry, go on, Mel. We haven't had any specific questions, but we're um, busy sharing really um, useful links. Okay. Um, as you're talking, Sarah, about... Yeah. Uh, chronic pain um, and uh, self-help guides about spoon theory, yeah. um, all those sorts of things. Okay, Sorry, thank you. you. Has anyone listening today heard of spoon theory? Because recently myself and Mel did a little session on this explaining that. And as you said, Sarah, it links in with pacing. And it's quite a funny theory to describe. It's like, it's not all about cooking, but it also tried to help members, of some of our members with hydrocephalus, to pace themselves to understand why they are not booming and busting all the time. Um, so we're happy. I can run that again. And we pulled some notes together and explained ways to do that. So, um, yeah, it's quite relevant. And it does make a difference because your body does need to rest and recover. And the more you do the boom and bust, the more you sort of the pain is increasing or you've got a lesser pain threshold to be able to manage things through the day. And it's far easier said than done. We know that. But we were, you know, we can try and work through that and explain it and put some things in place. We've worked with members to try and plan a week out, like you said, a batch cook one day so that you know you've got food rather than that's another sort of um, well, not exercise task you have to do when perhaps you've wanted to go out for that day and you yeah. know you're going to be shattered, you know. So that's a really interesting one. We can look pick that up again in future as well. Thank yeah, I you. Think, I think we should do one on pacing, Helen. Um, I, I personally benefited a great deal um, when with that um, idea of spoon theory and pacing it really changed things for me because I couldn't understand I wasn't managing my spina bifida very well at that time I couldn't understand why you know one day I was okay and then you know two days later I'd be in so much pain but I hadn't done anything so, you know, I, I really struggled to get my head around that initially. So we will do a, perhaps a session in the future, Helen and Jenny on pacing and the spoon theory. We'll go more into that, but we'll let you get on, Sarah, with um, um, about the arthritis today. OK, thank you. Um, so, as I said, the charity that I, I work for is called Versus Arthritis. It's across Wales, England, Northern Ireland, Scotland. Um, and our vision is a world free from the pain, fatigue and isolation of arthritis. We believe that no one should have to tolerate this impact and we are together pushing to defy the arthritis. So we're working with healthcare professionals, we're working with people with arthritis carers, just to try and push to defy it. So on our website, there is lots of information on our website. We've got an A to Z of the different conditions that we cover um, with lots of information. So it's worth having a look on there if you can. So for those of you in Wales, um, Wales has a Kutch Cymru project, which is designed to help adults in Wales live well with their arthritis. Um, England has a sort of similar project, um, but this is funded by the Welsh Assembly Government, which is why it's sort of Wales specific. Um, we, our key themes of the project are pain management, self-management, physical activity and shared decision making. And we're working with people with arthritis or MSK conditions, people who care for people with arthritis, healthcare professionals, community organisations and service providers. Um, so people don't need to formally be diagnosed with arthritis um, to have our support. Um, 
the Kutch Cymru project, it does support adults. However, we do have a young person and families team, which we work very closely with and we can put you in touch with. And there is a young person and families team across the UK as well. Um, so in terms of community organisations, we give a lot of talks to groups. Um, we raise awareness of arthritis so that people, if people say, oh, I've got arthritis, we're hoping they won't be greeted with the reaction of, oh, that's something my gran had, that's for older people, aren't you a bit young for that? Or um, the other one is, oh, it's just a bit of arthritis, come on, just get on with it. Um, we're trying to say it's not just a bit of arthritis and it really can happen to people of any age. So we're trying to really raise awareness so people feel less isolated when they have arthritis. So currently, um, the support that we're, gin we're giving and the Kutch Cymru project, we can give one-to-one -one support over the phone where we can sort of really break down um, sort of things people are struggling with. We can signpost you to other places if need be. We can refer you with your consent um, and really work with you to try and identify and help you sort of self-manage your condition um, and ways that you can sort of help um, yourself to help with those problems or struggles. Um, we help people to access information about their condition or strategies for living well with arthritis. So this may be by email, it may be by post, um, whichever works best for the individual. As I said, we signpost and refer to other organisations where appropriate. We've got virtual support groups. So we've got Waleswide virtual support groups. We've got Pembrokeshire virtual support group. Um, all of our support is completely free of charge. So open to anybody to join in. Um, and as I said, we speak at community groups to raise awareness. Um, and also in, within Wales, we've also held um, an online pain management course in association with the Hoyle Vare Health Board, um, which people can go on for free as well. And we've had an arts wellbeing course in association with the Happy Project. And we now have a month, monthly arts and wellbeing group as well that meet online for anyone in Wales with arthritis who wants to join. We work with healthcare professionals. So my colleague Danny is the professional engagement officer and she helps to build a professional network to provide professionals with good practice, regular information, research updates and access to support. And she also develops education and training solutions for GPs, GP trainees, physios, occupational therapists, pharmacists to help improve people's experience there. Because a lot of people say they went to the GP to try and get diagnosed and it didn't go very well or they didn't feel listened to or the GP dismissed them. So we're really trying to sort of help and bring their training right up to date with musculoskeletal conditions and arthritis. We also have a policy and campaigns team. So um, previously Wales was the only nation without a full paediatric rheumatology team. And thanks to our campaigning in 2019, the Welsh Government allocated funds for this to be set up. We've encouraged the Welsh Government to update its national arthritis strategy. So this is out for public consultation now. And um, so if you're in Wales, if you've got any say, you, there's a document, I can send that over and um, you can have a read through um, and give your views as well. It is quite a long document. It is about sort of 50 pages. So we don't really expect a lot of people to read it. But if there is anything on, if you are interested, we can send that out. Um, a lot of elective orthopaedic surgery has been on stop for most of this year and last year because of COVID. Um, in England, it was restarted in the summer when the cases dropped, but it wasn't really in Wales. So we are try we've been working with the Royal College of Surgeons to try and get that up and running again as soon as it is safe to do so. We've also, if you follow us on social media or on our VIST Arthritis website, we have a campaigns network. Um, so feel free to follow those um, to stay up to date with all of our work in policy and campaigns. So exciting times ahead in Pukutch. Um, so in Pembrokeshire um, and also Carmarthenshire, Ceredigion and across Wales, um, we'll be having more local self-management sessions, which include a topic and a cuppa. Um, we'll be having more local support groups, which will be face to face when it is safe to do so. And we've also got volunteering opportunities um, to make a difference to people with arthritis. So this isn't just in Pembrokeshire. This is across Wales, across the UK. Um, there's lots of opportunities that people can get involved with. So if we are on social media, um, we have a Cymru versus Arthritis and a versus Arthritis Facebook and Twitter. Um, so give us a like or a follow and Stay up to date with everything that's going on if you'd like to. Um, I can't talk about um, 
this is arthritis without talking about research. Um, we heavily fund research. In April 2020, we had £132.4 million invested into cutting edge, re ed cutting edge research. So it really is a big, important part of our organisation, the research aspect. And successes in terms of osteoarthritis from the research. So our research has highlighted the important role that exercise can play in reducing pain. It's contributed to the approval of the NHS funding of a treatment called autologous chondrocyte. I'm just going to call that ACI, I think, that repairs small areas of damaged cartilage using healthy cartilage grown from your own cells. We've also identified a number of jobs linked with higher risk of developing osteoarthritis. And currently, our research being funded includes, so we've got a centre based in Oxford, which is looking at how osteoarthritis develops and aims to find new ways of predicting how it's likely to progress. We've got a pain centre in Nottingham, aiming to improve our understanding of what causes pain so that better treatments can be developed. We've got early trials of stem cell treatments, which could help to repair cartilage damaged by osteoarthritis. And we've also got a study running into the part played by nerve proteins in and around the joints to find out if they could be a target for future pain treatments. So our research department is busy um, working on osteoarthritis and many other forms of arthritis. So we've got a helpline. This helpline is available nine o'clock, nine till eight, Monday to Friday. Um, and you can ring that for help and advice from anywhere in the UK. Um, so that's a really useful number. Um, you can give them a call as well. And if you don't want to talk to them on the phone, we do actually have a virtual assistant um, called Ava, which I'm going to show you a video of now um, that you can use on our website. I was I saw this recently in a versus arthritis presentation and I was very impressed. Ava can actually um, help you, it can also schedule a call back from a helpline advisor. So if it picks up that what you're talking about is too much for the virtual assistant, then it will ask you to um, choose an appointment for a helpline to call you back as well. So it can be used for that. Um, it is really useful. And as I said, the more people that talk to it, the more helpful it will come. So when you're on the Versus Arthritis website, there'll be three little buttons at the bottom. There's one that links to this online community, which I'll talk about. There's one that links to Ava, and there was one, it should still be there, um, called COVA, which is like Ava, but it's just for COVID inquiries as well. So our online community, it's completely free. It's moderated by our volunteer moderators. Um, it's kind of like an online cafe where people can just go in and ask their questions and other people answer. It's for people across the UK. Um, and as I say, mo moderated by amazing volunteer moderators. Um, and yeah, it's good to have a look if you've got sort of questions because other people might know the answer to them. We also have an Arthur range of products, um, which are social enterprise um, connected to this arthritis. Um, and these are products that can make everyday life a bit easier, um, such as devices to help you unlock doors with the keys and things for cars and gardening and things. So yeah, it's also worth having a look at those. They are, these aren't free, you would have to pay for these. 
We've got loads of information booklets on our website, um, which are free to order, or you can also download them. So you can order them to be delivered to your house um, and then you can read through them. There's ones on conditions, there's ones on medications, um, there's ones on sort of surgery, if you're sort of deciding whether or not to have surgery. Um, but the ones I find most useful are ones on sort of like managing your symptoms. So we've got ones on fatigue, ones on like gadgets, ones on, um, you know, anything like that, gardening, pregnancy, all sorts of things that might impact you with arthritis. Um, so those are really good information. So thank you so much for listening and for inviting me today. Um, I've put on the contact details of the Wales team, Carmarthenshire, Kerry Diggan and Pembrokeshire. I'm really sorry I don't have the other contact details on there because um, I thought it was just um, those three counties. But if there is any que uh, any questions at all, then contact you know the Wales team and they'll be able to put you in touch with the English team or the Scottish team or Northern Irish or whichever is most appropriate for you. Um, and then I've got references and useful links at the end so I can send I can send the slideshow out so you can put the links up if you if that's easier that's um, nice so should camera. I stop sharing now for questions or should I keep that up um you can keep that up for a moment yeah. um we've already on during the chat we've shared a link to the England um and to the Wales section yeah. on versus arthritis so um there was you you wanted um to share with us as well uh, a link to um, a feedback form? Yes, that right? I will do that now. I will get that up. We can do that and we can put that on the chat if anybody would like to give Sarah some feedback. It's about completely the information. anonymous as well. Um, yeah, thank okay. you. Well, thanks, Sarah. I think um, from looking from this is quite interesting. It's uh, lots of the things we've touched on throughout with our members some things are repeated uh, I hope kind of people that were like listening in today can um, sort of uh, you know uh, understand a little bit more or it'll help them a little bit more but again I think some of the lots of the things you've shared and I there's a huge wealth of information there which is fantastic both from a learning point of view from us as a um, support and development worker but also it gives our members a better understanding so that when they are going to GPs or going to see professionals, they can explain a little bit more and they have a better understanding of what they've got, knowledge of this. Um, I think one of the first comments um, Fee made earlier on was the fact that the she mentioned she had osteoporosis and the person misunderstood it and kept going on about osteoarthritis. So the fact that Fee knew what that was to explain, no, this is what it is helps people because of like you said misuse of perhaps terminology and things so um yeah so it's been really useful and helpful I think so I um, hope people have found that the same as well today and if I can help in any way if I can help deliver any more sessions like on gadgets or anything or if anybody wants any sort of one-to-one -one support um you know on sort of arthritis um then just get in touch with us um we are really happy to help in any way we can learn and have I got some iron stuff in the kitchen cupboard downstairs and it makes such a difference I can't get jar lids off so uh, yeah they're handy anyway so yeah yeah absolutely thank you thank you so much Sarah and hopefully um with the work of shine and support and development workers in shine and versus arthritis we can make um you know make life easier for our members and they get better at managing their condition yeah Absolutely. Thank you. And am I okay to send you the slides after with all the links on? After? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Um, and if any members want anything of that, the Facebook live session will be on Facebook. Um, and although we've, you know, get in touch with our co main contact number if you want copies of the slides. And we've done that and followed up with questions and queries after as well. So um, thanks for that. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye, bye. Everyone.